Democracy has a lot of benefits and democracy has a lot of costs. So I'm gonna try to frame this discussion between benefits and costs in a classic way, using the tool we call the Laffer Curve. In the 1980s, economist Art Laffer, then at USC and now a professional economic consultant, drew a picture on a napkin, a picture that changed the world. As the legend goes, Laffer drew a simple graph with a horizontal axis labeled tax rate and a vertical axis labeled tax revenue. On the graph, he drew a simple upside down U. When the tax rate was zero, a government wouldn't raise any revenue since it wasn't taxing anything. If the tax rate were 100%, again, the government wouldn't raise any revenue since people won't work or invest if they know government will take everything they earn. Or at least if they do, they won't tell the government about it. At some point in the middle, there's a sweet spot, a tax rate that would maximize government revenue. And back in the United States of the 1970s, when the highest tax rates reached 70%, Laffer was pretty sure that the tax rates were higher than the sweet spot. In economics, anytime we see a relationship that can be summed up as an inverted U, we're pretty likely to call it a Laffer curve type relationship, an homage to Art Laffer. My contention is that the world's rich democracies are overall on the wrong side of the democracy Laffer curve. Practical, non-utopian reforms exist that I believe would make a country slightly less democratic, likely create substantial long-run economic benefits, have little or no cost in resources, and be more likely to boost than to shrink widely embraced human rights. Just as importantly, for matters of practicality if nothing else, countries that enacted these reforms would still look and feel and be democratic. After all, I'm not recommending 50% less democracy. If you want to learn more about public choice, check out some of our other videos.